Hey guys, this is Echo Sourx, and you are checking out a Serum tip and trick tutorial video for ADSR sounds. In this video, we're going to be looking at a technique or a tip and trick that I've been messing around with recently inside of Serum that I've actually really liked. Uh, it's basically a tip and trick that will help fill out the spaces in between the notes of a drop. So this will really work for a bunch of different genres. I know a lot of tutorials will be like, this will work for everything, but this really will work for any genre where you're playing a drop or a lead or a type of sound that there are spaces in between the notes and maybe there's not a lot of chord action going. So I'm going to show you a progressive demo, but this would work very well for Future House, Deep House, where you have the bass style drops. It would work for Trap. It would work for Melbourne. It would work for all those genres really well. It's basically reminiscent of the that tempo synced gated reverb trick and i've done a tutorial on that before where you basically stick a or essentially put a reverb on a bus or an aux end and then tempo sync your pre-delay now if you don't have a reverb plugin that has tempo synced rhythmic values like quarter note eighth note 16th note all that stuff values then you have to do some math if it has a millisecond value but i've done a tutorial on that for the adsr network if you're curious it's similar to that but it it's using an lfo to modulate the release of some of the envelopes inside of Serum. So I have it all turned off right now. And I'm gonna play this lead sound. I'll play this demo real quick. So I have things turned off so it's not how it should be. And we're going to improve this little drop section with this technique. So let's listen to the kind of incorrect sound here. Okay, so what I mean by incorrect, if you see these two purplish blue tracks, I'm, not, I'm no good with color, um, you'll see that there are spaces in between the notes. And anytime you have a lead that is going to have space in between some sections of the notes or the rhythmic values, which would be most progressions, is you got to find a way to fill it out. Otherwise, it just completely drops off in the mix, right? Well, I am using, uh, if you notice on these two tracks, I have very little processing because I want to show you how powerful this trick can be. But I, I'm using the sausage fattener, and I'm forever going to think that this just makes things super louder. I hope you get that joke. But um, I'm using this as a way to limit the sound and a kind of a saturator. So you'll notice that when it's on, my the, the, the decibel difference between my peak and valley of the signal or the sound, it is more steady. So watch the fader down here. Right, if I turn this off. There's more of a decibel movement between the peak value in loudness and kind of how it dips down in between each note. I don't want that because it's a lead. So that's all that's going on there. And then I have some EQ cutting out a lot of the bass and even some of the, the, the mids of this sound. So nothing too crazy. If you care, this is a, a sound from Anna and a sound from Massive, but they're turned down very low. So these two leads in Serum are the main leads in this little section. All right, so let's get to the actual tip and trick. So what you can do, is to fill out the spaces in between these notes, right? Like this space, uh, this space right here. Sometimes you can throw on that, like I mentioned before, that gated reverb trick, and that's really cool. And it works really well, but sometimes I was, I was wondering if there's ways you know, to do it without using the gated reverb. And in a synth-like serum, there is, and this is all you have to do, is go to an open envelope, or open, sorry, an open LFO. So for me, I used LFO too. I, I just tweaked one of the side chain shapes and I'm gonna now modulate this to my release of a couple envelopes. So in Serum, envelope one is the, so I'll actually remove all this and we will, we will do this uh, real time. So there's envelope one, let's do envelope two. All right, so here's the sound. All right, and I have the reverb and spatial effects turned off, but here they are if you care. It sounds all right. I, I really don't like the reverb in uh, Serums, but this will make it sound way thicker. So what we're gonna do is I chose a side chain, sh side chain shape, that is a tongue twister for me, and I tweaked it a little bit. You, you wanna make sure that it's on envelope. So when it's on envelope, the note will restart the LFO. You can see the little hot tip down there. And it'll basically treat the LFO like an envelope, which is helpful. So I chose a time of quarter note, and I have a little bit of a delay about 64, that's up to you. It kind of depends how you're playing and I guess the tempo of the song. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modulate the release of my, I'm gonna modulate the release with this LFO of envelope one. 
So now I'm going to adjust these values really quick, turn down the decay and the hold a pinch. I'm going to turn this delay down, actually. So let's listen to this now. All right, so what this allows me to do is it allows me to have a set, set a release point that isn't pretty much zero. But if that's a that there's very little release at 93 milliseconds. And this makes your release past that point more musical. It actually is defining it via a a kind of an LFO shape that's actually kind of a side change. So it's kind of adding this bounce where there's there's the point and then there's a little section where there's no signal and then there's release signal. And that helps fill in these gaps. And when you add it back in with the spatial effects like the reverb and delay. All right, so now let's listen to this in the context of the little drop section. All right, so it's much fuller than what it was when I played it before because the release points in between those notes or the, you know, the spaces in between the lead notes are now being filled in with a musical release. So if I, if I bypass this, um, and we just did, let me bypass this modulator, and I just turn this up to this point. Let me turn off the reverb and delay. Right, it just goes on for days. There's no musicality to it. So in effect, what this does is it makes it more of a of a uh, musical release or effect. And I did not want to turn that all the way or get rid of that. All right. Okay, so another way that you can use this is you can actually modulate your filter. So I'm using envelope two to modulate right here. You can see it's modulating the cutoff of my filter. So envelope two, for all intents and purposes, is a filter envelope right now. Well, I'm going to modulate the release of this as well. And now I'm having the release of the filter, which is being modulated by this envelope, also open up with a musical value, which will further help fill out the drop. So are the sections, so let me get the, the delay and reverb back in. All right, so it sounds a lot better. That's it, guys. That's the tip and trick. I would use it on any, I guess, key element to a sound. So with this sound, it was the filter and obviously the envelopes. You could use it on some effects too. Maybe you have a lot of distortion on a bass or something like that. Then it would out. Then it would absolutely be useful in that capacity. But like I said in the beginning, you could use this on a future house, deep house bass, where there's you know the space in between the notes. You could use it on trap leads, Melbourne. Anything that you need to fill out the mix, you can use this tip or trick. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you for checking this tutorial out. I will see you next time.